So one of the things that we're going to start with when looking at solutions is water. Water being the most fundamental resource on the planet. So water is a crucial place to begin. And when we look at an ecosystem like the one here on the left, this is an ecosystem that is completely parched. This is the Jordan Dead Sea Valley. And this is actually, for me, my beginning in the permaculture journey was the five-minute video by Jeff Lawton, who was uh, then just a YouTube inspiration, now was one of my teachers. And he took 10 acres of desert land, and by observing it and using the permaculture principles and the tool set, identified the limiting factors and then designed a solution so that that ecosystem could become what we see just beside it six months later. Now, obviously Jordan is a little faster regrowth than Canada. Yes, there were trees that were planted. It wasn't just all seeds, but those are transformational ecological rebirth moments simply by observing that ecosystem. So any of you may be permacultures or not, but you can see that if you wanted to grow something in that desert, you're missing water right? The other thing you might be missing is soil or nutrients. And in fact, when you start to understand the soil and nutrients, you realize that it is all dependent on the life in the soil and they all eat organic matter. So what they did was they made three kilometers of soil. They filled it full of waste from a banana plantation nearby, which became the organic matter. And then they designed a system that was burgeoning with life and still is. Uh, if you look at the satellite images of it, there's this green blob that is the PRI uh, Jordan, Permaculture Research Institute of Jordan. There's also the Lus Plateau. This is a much longer time frame, so this is over 60 years. The area here, you can see the trails along the hillside of where the animals are overgrazing. Uh, and these area, the entire ecosystem was parched desert. And after terracing it so that they could have horizontal areas to grow crops for the locals, and then reforesting, so you see those little dots on the side of the hill? Each and every one of those is called a net and pan system or a pocket swale. So when water flows into one, it slowly trickles onto another one and into another one. So water never runs down the side of the hill anymore it zigzags across for kilometers filling up these little pockets one by one to ensure that every tree has its own little supply of water so they're all hand built now this is a community that was had lots of hands available but all of them are also able to farm in this area and this is what it looks like 60 years later so it's not some just greening your farmland or regenerating your garden or having a small impact you can see this image as i know it's really blurry but as far as the eye can see it is lush green vegetation so the entire river ecosystem is transformed by simply redefining how to interact with the land and this area is not only before it was cleared because there was farmers who were just letting their goats graze on it. But now there's no fighting over the grazing land because there's so much more availability than there ever was, but simply because it was designed properly as an ecological system. This is uh, from the work of Alan Savory, and so this is in Mexico. We can see a much larger time frame here as well, 40 years. And in these 40 years, there were no pocket swales dug, there were no uh, mulching of it, there was no drip irrigation, no trees planted, no seeds spread or anything. The only thing they did differently here was they took all the herders and they took all of their animals and put them together in one large herd and put a mobile electric net fencing on uh, around the herd so that it would move as if it was a tradition, a, a natural herd on the landscape, running away from predators. If you Google a flock of animals or whatever, you don't see them just all scattered out and spread. You see that in farmland. You see these flocks of bison or these flocks of birds, right? The animals herd together when we look at uh, the traditional movement patterns of these species. And so if we return to that and simply allow them to move like that again, the result is that the ecosystem is reborn because that ecosystem evolved with those herding animals in that normal pattern of movement and by killing all of the predators like we like to do as humans and then letting the goats and sheep free now that they're safe uh, actually destroys the ecosystem outright now there's a lot more detail in mob grazing or rotational grazing but we really can't do all of that right now um, so this is just to give you an idea that there is some real transformational impact that we can have with very simple techniques that aren't you know the list plateau was a a massive government funded project uh, international monetary fund project i believe actually with huge amounts of money that went in so yes there's that scale but also changing the way that the sheep move on the land is also revolutionary